The brothers and sisters in Christ, it's a delight to be with you. This is my first pastoral visit to your parish, to your community. As you know, I have been in San Jose for four years, and two of those years have been pandemic. So we've all been locked away in our homes. Thank goodness things are much better. Um, and so we're able to, to meet together, to worship together, and thank goodness. Um, I heartily welcome uh, uh, Bishop Joseph from Kerala. Um, and thank you for, for your visit as well to uh, the people of God, the people of, of your community. And uh, I hope that, um, that San Jose has treated you well over the past 10 years. I congratulate you for your 10th anniversary uh, as you celebrate the founding of, of this parish. Your pastor mentioned in the introductory remarks that this is a, an immigrant community that has come to this country from India, from Kerala, come to work, come because of family, come for various reasons, and you are here. Somehow, it was not only your choice to come because of work, because of family, or for other reasons. In the mystery of God's plan, God wanted you here. Just as he has wanted many other immigrant communities here in this place. I was amazed and happily surprised when I arrived to San Jose to see that there were so many immigrant communities among our Catholic communion from Vietnam, from Mexico, from, Fra from uh, France, from uh, India, from China, from so many different places. And yet we worship the same God, we share a faith, and we share communion with each other. Pope Francis has reminded us a couple of years ago that we are brothers and sisters to each other. That we are brothers and sisters to each other. I think we all remember that image uh, during the first month of the lockdown because of COVID. That image of Pope Francis praying for the entire world, walking up the plaza of St. Peter's, that plaza that normally is filled with tens of thousands of people, pilgrims. And there was only one person dressed in white, elderly, limping because of a hurt leg, and yet with a prayerful heart, carrying the prayers of the entire world before that crucifix, that miraculous crucifix, asking for the end of this pandemic. I think people throughout the world whether they were Catholic or not, had their eyes fixed on that one moment where the Pope not only represented the unity of the Catholic Church, but in a way he represented the unity of humanity for all of the world. We have some beautiful scripture passages that we heard today of St. Paul encouraging Timothy. Timothy was a young 
uh, leader, a lo young bishop that St. Paul had ordained in his community and was encouraging him to hold fast to the faith. St. Paul was already coming to the end of his own life. And St. Paul, who suffered greatly, many times he recounts how he was shipwrecked, how he was beaten, how he was taken out of, out of town and left for dead, how he was, uh, went without food, so many times. And yet, he kept the faith. And God was with him at every turn. And encouraging Timothy to keep the faith as well. As we listen to those words from St. Paul to Timothy, those words are meant for you and me as well. St. Paul is telling us today here in San Jose, to keep the faith. In difficult moments, in joyful moments. Because God is faithful. That God walks with us. He never abandons us. He is with us in difficult moments. Even though he may be quiet, even though he may be silent, he never abandons us. Jesus promised to his disciples at the end of his life, I will be with you until the end of the world. And God keeps his promises. God keeps his promises, not in ways that we want or expect, but in God's own way. Sometimes I want God to solve all of my problems. I want God to make my life easier. And it doesn't always happen. But God has his own plan in his wisdom. In the gospel today, Jesus is showing how people have finally been convinced that God the Father sent Jesus here to the world to reveal the love of God the Father. That is the faith that we hold on to, the person of Jesus Christ. And it is here as we celebrate the Holy Corbana, as we celebrate the sacraments of the church, where Jesus becomes present to us, where he keeps his promise, I will be with you until the end of the world. And so we are grateful today. We're grateful for the presence of Jesus, he never abandons us. Jesus who shows us the Father, the Father with the depths of his love. The Father who sent Jesus to us to show us how profound and how deep and how wide is the love of God for you, for me, for the world. When we are convinced that God truly loves us, it is then that our life changes. It was then that the life of St. Peter changed. It was then that the life of St. Paul changed. It was then that the lives of so many others throughout the centuries have been transformed. And they too have kept the faith. There are many children here I congratulate you for showing your children, your grandchildren, how to pray. Who Jesus is. Who God is. 
because that is how the faith is passed on from generation to generation. I'm glad that you maintain so many beautiful elements of your culture from Kerala, from southern India. Saint John Paul II used to say that if faith is not enculturated, that if it, it does not become part of the culture, that the, the faith does not take. It's like oil and water floating on each other. And so it's important that our faith become part of our culture, of the things that we become accustomed to. That is what we call a virtue. May the Lord continue to bless you, to bless your families, to bless your parish for 10 years more and 100 years more and so many years more, knowing that the Lord never abandons you. He is here with you. He is in your homes. He is with your families. He is with your children. That is the wonder that we celebrate today. God bless you.